I think it was the BAFTAs. The gold and black Gucci. Yeah, I'm pretty I sure lo- it was the BAFTAs. And then she wore a really beautiful green dress to something that I thought, you know, it's all Gucci, obviously. Wasn't loving the black and the the gray, the black and gold. You weren't. I knew what she was trying to do, but it just didn't. You know, sometimes it's a miss, sometimes it's a hit. Last the week before, I loved her dress. Yeah, and you're not. You don't. You just kind of look, but you stay removed from it all these days. Yeah, you know, I post. I thought at the Critics' Choice Awards. I think that was the other night. Selena Gomez looked probably the best I've ever seen her look in a red dress. She looked beautiful. She looked great. She looked great. Do you have any, you know, memories from like, you know, Joan and Melissa on the carpet? You know, look, your mother said everything to anyone, no matter what. Anything that just really pissed someone off or just like major fuck up where she just didn't know someone's name or just some. Oh my God. There were so many times I can't even, everyone's like, what was your best memory? I'm like surviving each show. It doesn't, you know, every, every, you know, when you're live, every moment is, is, is challenging, but I always think about like, what were my favorite moments? And I'm so fortunate to say there were so many, you know, it's, it's the hard moments and the bad moments that you really do remember, not all the good ones. Oh my God. When my mom and Leah, Leonardo DiCaprio met for the first time and I could hear it in my headset and hear the, uh, see it. And she's like, so good to see you. He goes, you too. He goes, you realize we've never met, but I feel like I know you. And she's like, I feel the same way. And it was like the sweetest moment. That's sweet. It was so sweet. See, there were tender moments. Oh, 100%. There were so many lovely moments. It was, I mean, listen, it changed red carpets, really. I what do you, so. I mean, I mean, it did. I'm not sure if we, I'm not sure if we've done something good or bad, but. (laughs) Totally good. Totally good. Listen, fashion police too has changed. It's, it was all good. It was, it looking back, it was all good. You know, and everyone's like, bring back fashion police. You know what? You can't bring back fashion police. Not in this climate. Not in this climate. Because it was a show where you had to have an opinion and you had to express it. And we live in a world now where you're not allowed to do that. How does that make you feel? I think I think everybody feels a little bit stifled at this point. I think in a, in one sense, it's really given all of us a broader level of sensitivity and way of looking at things. But I also feel it's gone too far and it's killed a lot of a lot of comedy. And it it it's you know it need. The pendulum swung so far. I feel like it needs to right itself now a little bit that people aren't literally canceled for something they did 30 years ago. Yeah. I think it's switching a little. But also you want to allow people, especially comedians, say you're allowed to... I finally feel like they're going to soon start to give us permission to laugh again because I feel like that was taken away I don't know how a comedian does their job now I don't know either anymore I don't know like I haven't seen any live comedy lately so I don't really know not at all I don't either I would imagine it's not easy if you're trying to avoid certain topics it's got to be being a stand-up now has to be incredibly challenging incredibly challenging do you think your mother just would have, I mean, curtailed her act? I like to think that my mother would have been grandfathered in like a Dave Chappelle. I that know. you would want her to go bananas commenting on it. You know, I, I think it would have been a lot of that going after people that were doing that and taking the, the air out of them. That would be fun. You know, I saw, I remember this so clearly, a clip of these people, is these college girls, I guess Chelsea Clinton had spoken and she was leaving whatever place it was. And 
these people were coming up and like yelling at her for stuff her parents did. And you, and she's standing there apologizing. And you're like, this has gone too, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You're yelling at someone for something you didn't like that their parents did and not stopping till she apologized. I mean, that's, you got to admit, that's crazy time. That's a lot of, that's crazy time. A lot of it's crazy time for me, to me, I think that's crazy time. I think the other thing is like any cancelization by not saying anything. Like there are people now that are canceled or have been canceled just by default of not speaking up or that's crazy. Oh yeah. Now, now your silence is criticized. Right. And it's, well, it's, it's yeah. how do we get back to the middle? How do we get back to the middle? Listen, everyone, there's a lot of people one-on-one -on -one when you talk to them, they're tired of it all. No, no one wants to say that, but one-on-one -on -one, you get things. I mean, I get DMs that if I copy them and I never would, but you're just like, I mean, I've had people on my show that are controversial and they, all this criticism and then you get all these DMs like, oh, I love these people. I'm like, yeah, of course you do. Cause they're just saying what they want. And, and, and look, I think it's a lot of people are tired of it. I, I think. But I do think in one sense, it was, it was a needed sort of check yeah in that but i think we've all gotten the idea of of a broader sense of sensitivity but yeah we can't and, be, but we can't live afraid right and like i've have personally learned things that i just didn't know like truly just didn't know and i'm like oh wow so i that's what i love like when you're like huh i saw nothing wrong with whatever but now i get it so no one's schooling me because it's not something i said but it's from another situation that's the positive for me Yes. But I agree. I think it needed to happen. And now it, there has to be some middle ground. Like I, I agree. There has to be middle ground. That. Has anyone ever come up to you and screamed at you for something your mother did? Oh my God. So many times. <laughs> but mostly now it's all very positive. You're like, I didn't say it, people. It's like, back off. And I was I'm like, really? You want to, you, you want me to re be responsible for what came out of her mouth? You're never going to get to walk from point A to point B. You'll be stopped wherever you go. Right. So I'm always just, but most of the time it was that they, they loved her. But when I just look at him, I'm like, really? What? I, or I, or I always deflect with my own humor. You know, I always say, yeah, really go back and watch what she used to talk about when I was in high school. Don't start with me. Well, speaking of your own humor, like you wrote this book, which is very funny. You dedicated it to Cooper. You said, sorry about this. Like, I mean, do people realize, I mean, I've realized it because I've had you on twice before and I've read your other books, but like, do people realize like you're actually funny or is that like saying to Paris Jackson, you should go and become a singer? I think it's a little bit of that. I think um, people are always surprised at how funny I am. But if you go back and look at interviews with my mom, she, people say, who makes you laugh? And she would always say me. And we have very different humor, very different. So I, people are always surprised when I'm funny. Uh, yeah, I would think so. Like, I think if you say Melissa Rivers, people don't think, oh my God, she's so funny. But again, I've had you on twice. Yeah. I've read your other books. They're funny. Yeah, and my son is funny. He is? Yeah, Cooper's funny. How do you think your brand of humor is different than your mom's? I think I'm much more sarcastic and I'm much drier. 